In this video, we are going to look at how to set up a microtech router to behave like a, like a switch, right? So basically, we are going to set up VLANs, assign ports to those VLANs, and then um, transfer that. Um, to do that, we are going to set up this particular architecture that I am showing on, on the screen. So basically, we are going to set up two separate VLANs uh, in two separate subnets, as you can see here, and we're going to enable DHCP on, on those VLANs. Um, the test is basically going to be connecting a text computer that I have with me here onto ETA1, which we are going to place into VLAN 10, and then we determine which IP that test client is going to pick up. Right? We expect that it will pick up an IP within the 192, as you say, 10.1 or 10.0 subnet. Right? And then we do same for ETA2. So we're going to move the test client again to ETA2. And then we see if it's going to get an IP within the particular submit, right? Now, for the purposes of the configuration, I will be connected to ETA4, um, where I would handle all configuration run. So let's get right into it. And the very first thing we'll do is to create a bridge interface, right? So in this case, bridge one. So we go bridge, and then we add a bridge interface, right? So bridge one. And the next thing we'll do is to enable VLAN filtering on that particular interface, and then we apply, right? Now, um, the next thing we are going to do is to create the VLANs that uh, will be part of this particular uh, bridge interface, okay? So we'll add, so for bridge one, we're gonna add VLAN 10, right? And then VLAN 10 is going to be tagged for bridge one, right? Of course, that is where we're going to assign the IP address. And then it's going to be on tag for ETA one. So that is what we have done here. So apply, okay. Then we're going to do same for VLAN 20, right? So the VLAN ID is 20. Still going to be tagged for bridge one and then on tag for ETA two in this case. So ETA two. And then we apply same here. Okay. Now the next thing will be to add ETA1 and ETA2 to the bridge interface, right? So we go ports and then we select ETA1. ETA one has been added to this particular bridge interface. We go onto the VLAN page, and then as we indicated, ETA1 is going to be part of VLAN 10. So the PVID you are going to put here is 10. We we'll apply same, and then we do the same for ETA two. So we drop down, select ETA two, part of page one, go VLAN, and then that will be other PBID or what VLAN twenty. So twenty, apply, and then hit OK. Now, now that this has been done, we've added the physical ports ETA one, ETA two to the bridge interface. We have assigned them to the various VLANs. The next thing would be to create the VLAN interfaces under the bridge one and apply the IP address to them. So we go interfaces, drop down, select VLAN. And then the first VLAN we are going to create is VLAN 10. The VLAN ID is 10. And then it's supposed to be under bridge one, the bridge one interface. So we'll apply and then OK that. And then we create the second VLAN, which is VLAN 20. The VLAN ID is 20. And that is also still going to sit under the bridge one interface. We apply that as well, and then hit OK. And the next thing would be to, for us to create the assign IP address to the VLAN interfaces and also to create a GCP server for those particular subnets, uh, for those subnets. So, we we'll go IP addresses and then we hit the plus sign. Now for VLAN 10, we're going to assign 192.168.10.1 slash 24. We we'll drop down here and select VLAN 10, apply. And then we assign 192.168.20.1 slash 24. Also to VLAN 20, apply same and then hit OK. Next, let's create a DHCP service for the two VLANs. 
to do that, we are going to go IP DHCP server, right? DHCP and DHCP setup. We will drop down and select the VLAN interface and then we'll maintain a default, right? To create that. And then we do same for VLAN 10 as well. Heavyland 20, sorry. So still maintain defaults. And then that will be for Milan 20. So basically, we have completed a setup. We have assigned ETA 1 to Milan 10, ETA 2 to Milan 20. And then, of course, we've created a sub interface under break 1 for Milan 10 and assigned IPs to it. And then we've enabled DSTP on those particular interfaces. What I'll do is that I'm going to go interface. Currently, you see ETA 1 is down. There's no traffic on ETA 1. What I'm going to do now is to connect my TEPS client to ETA 1, right? And really, we see ETA 1 starts passing traffic, right? So let's go to our DHCP service and see if this client that I have this client that I've connected has picked any IP. So when you go to the leases and you realize that it is picking the IP 192.168.10.254. So that is for when we collect we connect to ETA 1. Now let's connect to ETA 2. So I'm going to move it from ETA 1 to ETA 2. So we expect to see ETA 2 also come up. So ETA 2 is also started passing traffic. We can now go to the DCP service still and then confirm that the same clients, as you can see, the MAC address is same. It's also picking an IP within 192.168.20.254, which is the IP that we, the tablet that we have assigned to VLAN 20, right? So basically, this is how you can configure the Microsoft router to behave as a switch where you are sign various spots to different VLANs. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.